Ah, okay. okay. So we're... Perhaps after the talk, or between the two talks, or after uh, Jake's talk, which is the last one, um, there's a sign-up sheet for people going to uh, the airports either in Trieste or in, uh, in Venice. So if you... Self-service, self-organized, so just come and take a look at who else is going to... <coughs> so that would be, you know, to organize taxis and so on. So very happy to introduce Claudius Zibrobius, who's going to tell us, he's fortunately given us a short, shortened title, classification of multi-curve invariance. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me. It's uh, an exceptional honor to be uh, able to have the opportunity to present uh, my research uh, at this awesome conference. I want to tell you a story about two multi-curve invariants. One multi-curve invariant for uh, not filler homology and another multi-curve invariant in the context of Cabana homology. Both of these multi-curve invariants are structurally identical. First of all, they're both invariants of Conway tangles. Here's an example of a Conway tangle. A Conway tangle consists of two pieces of string entangled inside uh, a three ball, okay, such that the four endpoints lie on four fixed points on the boundary sphere. Okay, so we're looking at proper embeddings of two intervals into the closed three ball. Okay. And um, the second um, thing about these multi-curve invariants is that they're both one-dimensional objects on the boundary three ball containing the tangle. Okay, so the one-dimensional objects on the two-dimensional boundary of our three-dimensional object of our tangles. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, so this is the two-twist uh, tangle. Okay, so it has this diagram here. Okay, and let's look uh, first at the uh, Higa-Fleur uh, multi-curve invariant, okay, which for the purpose of this talk, I will denote uh, by gamma HFK of the tangle T. And with t this tangle, this multi-curve invariant associates, well, one-dimensional object on, um, on a four-punctured sphere, on this four-punctured sphere here, um, and that invariant uh, looks, like, looks like this. Is this um, consists of a single component which is embedded. Let me also give you another example um, what these look like, uh, what, these, what this uh, multi-curve invariant looks like more generally. So here's a more general uh, Conway tangle. Maybe I should hold it like this. Um, okay, so there's a non-rational tangle. Okay, it can't be um, uh, twisted to, to the trivial tangle. Okay, and for this particular tangle, let me also draw uh, the diagram for this tangle. Okay, let me, let's see. Okay, uh, no, I wanted to hold it like this, I think. Okay. Uh, Okay, so it's this di tangle diagram. And the multi-curve invariant on the um, Higa-Fleur side, HFK, of this tangle consists of uh, three components. Okay, one component looks like this. It wraps around these two tangle ends. I, don't, I remind you... So, you should think of this four-punctured sphere really as being identified with um, the boundary of the three ball containing the tangle. Okay, so these are really natural invariants. So the second component of uh, this tangle invariant looks almost identical, except that it now wraps around um, these two tangle ends. Okay. And then there's one third component, okay, which um, looks as follows. It uh, looks almost... Uh, identical to that one, it's also embedded, and it looks like this. Okay. So that's the invariant uh, on the not flow homology side. Now on the Kabanov homology side, um, there we have another invariant, there we have the invariant gamma KH, that's my notation for the purpose of this talk again. Um, and this, um, well there's one, one uh, one input that it, where the structure is perhaps slightly different, we also need to fix, fix the base point. Um, we need to uh, distinguish one tangle end from all the others. In my uh, little models here, I can do this by attaching this little felt piece to this tangle end. So now we have a pointed tangle. Okay. And uh, once we've done this, then well, we should also 
distinguish this tangle end from the others. From the others. And uh, now I can draw um, the multi-curve invariant for this one. Again, we only have a single component. And it almost looks the same as this one, except that it's now a figure eight curve. Okay, it has a self-intersection point at this point. Okay, bless you. Um, okay, what about this other tangle? Okay, we're now in the Kabanov setting, so I should um, fix my base point. And now um, the, uh, there are now two, invariant, uh, two components of the invariant, KH. Um, one of them looks, um, well, almost like this one again. So this green component, um, so that looks like, looks like this. Sorry. Okay. So again, a figure eight curve, okay, which is, again, the same, same as this one, except there's now a twist here. And then there's one other component instead of these, uh, these two. Um, and that looks a bit more complicated. some curve that wraps around uh, these two tangle ends. Um, and again, I remind you, um, this four punctured sphere should be identified with this, uh, with the boundary of the tangle. Uh, so this is um, identified with a distinguished tangle end. Okay, and now let me finish this curve. Oop. We connect this one and this one. Okay, so two examples of what these multi-curve invariants look like. Okay, so in summary, with a four with a four in the tangle, with a Conway tangle, in both cases we associate a collection of curves on a four punctured sphere, namely the four punctured sphere that is the boundary of the three ball containing the tangle minus the four tangle ends. Okay. Now what makes this invariant really useful is the fact that both yeah you have bounding co-chains. Um, I haven't said anything about Fukaya categories yet, um, but uh, I'll come to that later, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, um, other questions? Okay, um, Okay. so what makes, it makes these invariants really useful is the fact that they both satisfy gluing theorems, which allow you to recover not flow homology and on this side, Kavanov homology. How does this work? Well, I can take take two Conway tangles and glue them together. Okay, so for instance, I could, um, where do I have red? Yeah, I have red. Red is better, okay. So for instance, I could, um, I could close up this, this, con uh, this Conway tangle to get the trefoil knot. Okay, how can I do this? Well, for instance, I could do um, something like this. Okay, then I have the crossing here and then, whoop. So that would be a trefoil knot. I can also do this with my models. Okay, let me see if I can figure this out. So we connect opposite tangle ends. Okay, and now I have to be careful how I connect these two. Uh, does that work? No, that's the trefoil. Ah, no, what? Okay, I think it works like this. Okay, so again, we, have, we now have the trefoil knot. Okay, and um, so we glue two Conway tangles uh, together. And uh, well, we know what the invariant looks like um, for the blue tangle. Now I need to tell you what the invariant looks like for the red tangle, and that's, um, that's very simple. Okay. Um, it's very simple. Namely, the invariant uh, looks like this. It's this uh, red curve. So again, an embedded uh, curve on this side, and on the Kavanov side, it also looks yeah, almost identical. Um, so there, Again, we introduce this point of self-intersection, this figure eight curve. Okay, and now we can uh, state the gluing theorem in both cases, uh, which says that, um, can I draw here? Can everyone read down here? Yeah, okay. Uh, so it says that uh, the not flow homology of the union of two tangles, let me call them uh, T prime and T. So we take the union of these two uh, tangles, T prime and T, um, tensored with the two-dimensional vector space, K 
Okay, so I'm working over characteristic two here. Um, this is isomorphic to the Lagrangian Fleur homology of the two curves, namely the curve, or rather the mirror of uh, the curve for the, ah! Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, the curve for T prime and uh, then uh, the curve the curve for T. Okay, so this, um, this HF here, this is Lagrangian uh, Fleur homology of these two curves. Okay, so now let me say something about uh, the Foucault category. So from a symplectic point of view, what we're doing, we associate with um, uh, these Conway tangles, we associate objects in the Foucault category of the four punctured sphere, and um, the morphism spaces in this Foucault category, um, they compute uh, not Fleur homology. Or on the Kavanagh side, uh, they compute um, Kavanagh homology. And the uh, statement here is structurally exactly the same. So if you want to compute the uh, Kavanov, the reduced Kavanov homology of the union of two tangles, T prime and T, and then uh, we can just compute the Lagrangian Fleur homology, Lagrangian Fleur homology of uh, the two curves. Now we take the Kavanov the curves, of course. Okay, any questions up to this point? Yeah? Uh, do you think that the formula of the, the union of the length is a non structure? Uh, no, this could also be a link, and um, this could also be a link. Yeah. Um, and then in the case, okay, in the case of a link, um, you would drop this factor. Uh, then then we get link, link flow homology. Yeah, good question. Uh, yes, you can, um, you can make this work without, uh, with gratings, but I'm going to not talk about gratings. Uh, but there, there are bi-gratings, yeah, and you can make this work with bi-gratings, so with relative bi-gratings uh, on the Knopfler homology side and uh, with absolute bi-gratings on the Kamanov side. Uh, okay, maybe I should say a few words about the history of these invariants. So this is um, uh, an invariant that grew out of my uh, PhD thesis, um, and it is basically a a geometric interpretation of uh, a bordered sutured invariant, or alternatively, you can also view this as a uh, geometric interpretation of multipointed Higgoff Fleur homology. Okay, so I should mention a couple of uh, other names here. So um, this uses well, bordered Higgoff Fleur homology. So uh, Lipschitz, um, Robert Lipschitz, is he here? Um, uh, Peter Oshrad, and Dylan Thurston. And um, I'm using a version called bordered Sushut Higa Fleur homology, and that's due to uh, Ruman uh, Zarev. Okay, so from around uh, 2009, and this is earlier, I think, uh, maybe 06. Um, okay, so that's that's on the Higa Fleur side, and on the Kavanov side, uh, this invariant in the form that I'm going to tell you about. This is uh, due to uh, myself and my, my co-authors, Artem Kutelsky and uh, Liam Watson. Uh, which we defined a couple of years ago. And this uses, um, there I should also mention a couple of other names, because this is essentially um, just a geometric interpretation of um, algebraic, again, algebraic invariants that you can define in Kavanagh homology. So there we're using uh, uh, work of um, Barnatan. His general framework, uh, I think it's 04. Um, and um, this, this project was inspired by uh, work of um, uh, Hedden, um, Harold, Chris Harold, um, um, Matt Hogenkamp, and uh, Paul Kirk from 2018. Okay, so they defined functor from Banatan's Gabordian category to the Foucault category. And um, 
we then yeah, simplified and extended that construction and also, importantly, proved uh, this gluing theorem, which allows you to, which makes this theory really useful. So wh why is this? Um, yeah. This is reduced Kavanaugh homology, yes. Yeah. You can also get unreduced Kavanaugh homology, and there's also a version that I will mention uh, later uh, um, uh, that recovers reduced Banat homology. Yeah. So why, why would you be interested um, in studying these Conway tangles? Well, for example, we, could now, we can now understand, thanks to these uh, two theories, we can now understand how they behave under crossing changes. So for example, I could do something like this. Okay. And well, all I have to do, okay, so I'm doing a crossing change. So here's a, a basic crossing. Let me do this in the Kavanov setting. So here's a basic crossing. So what we had before, I think, was this, this crossing. Now to get to the other crossing, well, I just rotate this by 90 de uh, 180 degrees around this axis. Okay, so, well, because these curves are natural with respect to the mapping class group action, they really live on the boundary of um, these three balls, all I have to do is, well, change these red curves. So here I had six intersection points. Okay, and now I rotate this. Maybe I use uh, yellow for this, for the new curve. Um, and now I rotate this, and I obtain uh, this curve here, which only has these two intersection points. Okay, namely, well, not the homology of the, of the unknot stabilized ones. And I can do exactly the same on this side. So there, uh, I rotate uh, this curve, and again, I only get two intersection points, okay, and I get um, the Kavan homology of the unknot one stabilized, yes. Ah, oh, no question, okay. Questions? Okay, so, um, okay, so in principle, we can now understand sort of how, uh, these, um, how, how these two theories change under, for instance, a crossing change or other tangle replacements, but to, to really, yeah, um, understand what's going on, we need to better understand um, what these multicurve invariants look like, okay, properties of these invariants. And um, for this, it's often useful to consider these curves not in um, these uh, four punctured spheres, but rather to consider lifts to a certain covering space. So uh, we now lift uh, these curves. Yeah? Yeah? Same question as before. Um, yeah, and then there are no bounding code chains in, in here. Ah, sorry. The question was, are there any bounding code chains in this picture? And the answer is no. Say again. Is there a deep reason for that? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it says that so there's a classification result that tells you that um, sort of the, the, the algebraic objects um, are that these theories correspond to, they're classified by these, by these objects in the Fukai category, and the, the worst that can happen is that they, you get local systems. Okay, but I'll address that, that issue later. But otherwise, you just get curves, and that's it. No bounding cochains. Okay, so now we um, look at, lift these curves to a certain covering space. Uh, we lift these, these curves along, along the map, um, uh, which lifts this to, to a planar uh, space. So this is um, this covering map, which you can think of as the, the twofold branch cover of the four punctured sphere branch at the four points. That gives you a torus with four marked points, and then you take the universal cover of the, um, of the torus, and that gives you this checkerboard coloring. And um, so downstairs, um, well, you have maybe the front the front is shaded, okay, the back is, uh, is still black, I guess, okay, and the front is lifted to these pieces and the back to these squares. Okay, now, now we lift those curves, and let's do this for, for these particular examples. So I uh, claim that if you lift those uh, two blue curves on the higa fleur side, you get um, this curve here, so that's uh, one of them, and the other one, well, it's just translated, um, Looks similar, okay. And the green curve, green curve lifts to a, um, a straight line of slope two. Okay, where do I um, draw this? Okay, straight line of slope two. Uh, that's not. Okay, so. okay. like 
this. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, that looks simple. And we can do the same. Uh, that looks certainly simpler than, than this picture, I hope. And we can do the same thing on, on this side. And there, um, well, I've drawn this covering space, just uh, zoomed out a bit by a factor of two, uh, so that everything fits on the board. And um, there, the curve, uh, well, we just have a single blue curve. Okay, and there, the curve uh, looks like this. Um, okay, that's one of them. And then there's also um, a, a curve of slope uh, of slope two. Okay, that corresponds to this green green curve, uh, but this one is more complicated. It um, stays in the neighborhood of this curve of slope two, but it kind of winds around uh, this curve of slope two. Okay. Now the classification result uh, that the, I want to tell you about is the following. Okay, so the first um, first is a theorem that I uh, proved uh, in 2019 about the um, the Higgs flow multicurve invariance, and it says that um, every component every component of um, gamma H of K of T. Okay, for any tangle T, um, is one of the, the following curves. There are basically two types of curves, and we see both types of curves in, in this picture. Namely, we see um, one type of curve um, that uh, wraps around tangle ends. Right? All these points are tangle ends downstairs. Okay, so there's one, one curve that wraps around these tangle ends um, and we call these uh, components special components. So this one, um, let's denote this by S2 infinity. Okay, so infinity means the slope of this curve um, is infinity, right? We can pull this straight, okay, to a line of slope infinity and have length, length two. Okay, that's the index here. And let's call this uh, S plus. And then similarly here, uh, there's a curve um, that just looks just like the first, um, but it wraps around the other two tangle ends. So let's call this um, S minus, and we call the union of these two uh, just S, um, S4. We call this um, the union of S2, S minus. Okay. And uh, one part of this classification theorem is that these, um, these curves always come in pairs. Okay, and if you add the grading, they always come in conjugate uh, pairs. The Alexander grading is, is reversed. Okay, so that's the first family of, of curves. So um, there we have some slope, P over Q. In this case, it's infinity. Okay, but P, P over Q can be um, any slope for some P, P over Q in QP1. Um, and then we, have, uh, then we have length, okay, and this... Uh, length is always a multiple of four. So these fun come in um, families, okay, but we can stretch, stretch those curves. Okay. Okay, that's the first uh, type of curve. And the second type of curve is um, this curve here, this, which is, just looks like a straight line, okay. Um, and these are the so-called uh, rational curves. This one is a rational cu curve of, uh, of length one uh, and slope two. Okay, so there's the slope. There's length. And R stands for uh, rational. Okay. You, yeah, what, what about the length? Yeah, just, um, okay, so, so you could imagine um, pulling, sort of stretching these curves. So in, that instead of wrapping around these two tangle ends, they stay uh, around these two tangle ends for longer on the right-hand side. So maybe 
port, uh, port angle ends with six or so, so on. Yes, yeah. That's what the length um, tells you. Okay. Yeah, and these rational curves, they always have length one. Okay, so you might forget the index. Okay, and then there are these rational curves. For some, some slope P over Q, Q P1. Okay, and here you might see some local systems. Okay, so let's... In local systems, you can think of them as matrices, dec decorations of, um, of these curves by matrices uh, uh, that, are, that are invertible. Okay, but for the purpose of this talk, you, you can ignore these uh, local systems uh, because uh, one reason is because they have never shown up in this setting. Um, of the, yeah. Any other questions about this? Can you repeat the question? Uh, the bi gradings, yeah. Um, you can see some of the gradings more naturally in the covering space. So the cover, I was in, in both cases, the bi gradings, relative bi gradings, can be computed by looking at uh, domains or yeah, uh, between intersection points. Um, if you look at the pairing picture, um, and then counting how many times did you cross the tangle ends. Um, so it's essentially, yeah, it, so the motto is you can do essentially uh, higgoff fleur homology, but on a four-punctured sphere. That's, that's the, the short motto. Um, yeah. And now the, the theorem on the Kavanov side um, looks almost identical. Uh, so we proved this uh, uh, a year ago, uh, and yeah, it's almost identical. So every component... of this curve, and now we look at the uh, Kavanov, reduced Kavanov curve, uh, is one of the following. Um, okay, we have um, the special curves. Okay, so this is, this um, blue curve here is an instance of a special curve. Um, special curve, uh, but this is in the Kavanov setting. So this should be H of K. Um, again, a curve of slope infinity, and then um, some slope, uh, named, uh, some length, namely length four. Uh, in general, uh, we could also have shorter lengths. So here, the length is only a uh, multiple of two for um, some slope P over Q in QP1 and, and in some length. Okay, so that's the first uh, type of curve. And then there's also, again, rational components. Okay. And these, can, these uh, rational components, they can, in principle, have uh, longer length. Okay, again, for um, P over Q some slope and some length. Okay, and this would be an instance of a rational curve, so a Kabanov rational curve, oh, sorry, um, of length one. And again, we see slope, slope two. Okay. So, yeah, in already, I mean, how many, how many of you were surprised by this picture? No one, okay, I, me. Okay, but I was surprised, I and mean, there you should really, really be, I, I was really surprised to see the, this, this phenomenon. And maybe we, we've already gotten used to this fact that if you see one interesting phenomenon on the not for homology side, then you should also go looking for it on the Kavanov side and vice versa, and yeah, maybe we've um, gotten used to this, but I mean, I, I would argue that we shouldn't. Um, at least I, I'd, I'd like to see a conceptual explanation for, for why, why you see the similarity. Um, because the proofs of these, I mean, the construction of both invariants is really uh, different, and the, also the proofs of these two classification results uh, come from very different directions. OK, 
case, so one stays internal to Higo flow homology, and the other one uses uh, homological mirror symmetry. So really, yeah, very different. Okay, any any questions? Do I have a recipe to go from, uh, you mean from, from not flow homology to, uh, to from Kovanov to? Uh, yeah, so that would be amazing. So that would be a first start to, to, localize, to give a local construction of Nathan Down and Spectre sequence. That would be great. I don't have that. Okay. So, um, okay, so now we understand these components of these multi curtain variants. Um, so if we now want to understand how, well, how these two invariants behave under, um, say, crossing change, we really need to understand sort of how, in what combinations, these components can show up as, the, uh, as invariants of actual tangles. Okay, so we need to find out some, some properties of these curves. Okay, but maybe that's a, that's a really, I mean, I guess that's a really hard question. So maybe let's first look at the, uh, at the components themselves. Do they have any meaning? Right? I mean, for example, we see these rational components. These rational components are identical to the invariance of rational tangles. Okay? And we know that, um, so one, one can show that uh, every tangle, so it's not a coincidence that this tangle here, in both settings, contains a component that looks like the invariant of a rational tangle. Okay? That's, that's true in general. And so that's, that's uh, kind of remarkable. So what, what is the meaning of this rational component, for instance? Okay, I know, yeah? Um, are they, so in the example that I erased for, for, for this tangle, um, there is this bijection, okay, but it can fail for more complicated examples. So there are examples where, yeah, the, the rational components have different slope, for example, or um, where the number of um, spatial components is different in both settings. So, yeah, there's not an obvious bijection. I mean, that, that would be... Oh, that would be amazing, but no, it's, it's, that's not true. Um, okay, um, so uh, in the remaining 30 minutes or so, I want to um, study one particular simple class of, uh, of Conway tangles that you construct uh, very easily. So here, we, we, the construction starts with a knot, okay, and we cut it open uh, to get a 1-1 one, one tangle, and then we take a, a second uh, piece of string, and we um, tie it into this um, into this blue tangle strand so in such a way that the two strands stay parallel throughout. Okay, so we just double um, this tangle. And this tang these tangles have very nice properties. For instance, if I close off like this, if I take these closures, what do I get? The unknot. Okay, in which I can. Yeah. Okay. Don't have to prove this. Okay. So here is the unknot. Um, okay. So well, let, let's draw a diagram of this. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have um, so that's the the one one tangle that I start with. And now I tie in a, a second component, okay, which stays stays parallel throughout. Okay, and um, I can correct the framing, I can choose, um, so this, this tangle now depends on the t kind of tangle diagram, okay, but so we can compensate that by adding some, some number of twists um, up here. So let's do that. One, two, three, four. Okay, six twists. Okay, and we can call this, uh, this tangle uh, the double tangle uh, TK um, for, in this instance, the trefoil. Okay, that gives us a construction for any knot in the knot table. We get some uh, Conway tangle, and we can ask, okay, well, what is the multi curve invariant uh, for this? Okay. And um, this uh, corollary 
so the proposition uh, that you can easily prove from this property that you have this um, this unlocked closure is that um, um, that these uh, that the multi-curve invariants for these tangles have a very simple form. Okay, there's exactly one rational component, and all the other components are special components. Okay, so for for any knot k in S3 um, and star in either HFK or Kabanov. Um, so gamma gamma star um, of TK contain, contains exactly one rational component of slope one, um, and then some integer slope m. Okay. okay. So there exists one some integer m, okay, which is actually always even. Okay. And then all the other components are special components. So maybe S uh, I1, uh, and all of those special components have slope infinity. Okay. okay. So that follows from is an ex easy exercise from the fact that uh, you have this uh, this unknot closure. You can still uh, say this. This is just general, so for, for cap zero tangles, cap trivial tangles, uh, as Liam likes to call them. Um, yeah, this is not special to this particular family, but yeah. Um, other questions? Okay. Uh, what do I need? Okay. Okay. Um, so this is, this is true in both settings, and now we can uh, try to understand what is what is the slope. What is the slope here um, of this rational component? Okay, can we somehow get our hands on this? And the answer is yes, um, at least in the uh, Hegel Fleur setting. And let's call this a proposition. A uh, proposition uh, which I should have proved um, years ago because it is a really yeah, easy computation. So um, this uh, says that um, for any um, so gamma TK H of K, um, is equal to, um, so we have this um, rational component, uh, R1, and it has a slope 4 times tau of k, and then special components. Okay, and this, this uh, proposition it really is a um, uh, uh, just a computation of a certain border suture bimodule uh, um, that allows you to extract um, to extract uh, this tau invariant um, from a certain third multi invariant that I want to mention here. So sketch proof. Um, so this uses uses a multi curve. Invariant uh, gamma HF um, for three manifolds um, with with boundary uh, equal to the torus, and this this multi curve invariant is due to um, Hansen and um, Jake Rasmussen and Liam Watson. Okay, and this is a, a multi curve invariant um, that sits. Again, like, like uh, these examples, we have a three manifold with torus boundary, and the invariant is a one dimensional object on the two dimensional boundary on this torus, uh, in fact, once punctured torus um, of this uh, three manifold. Okay, and um, this uh, computation tells you exactly how to extract um, this invariant here for 
TK from the invariant of the not complement. Okay, a very simple exercise. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. So now, the next question is, uh, what about, um, and that's all I'm going to say about the proof, sorry. Um, so now the next question is, what about, um, what about the Kavanov setting? Okay. And there, um, Lukas Lebak and I uh, have the following theorem, which says that gamma TK in the Kavanov setting is equal to, well, okay, we again have this rational component, right, according to, to our uh, proposition over there. Um, and here the slope is two times theta, two times theta of k, k plus uh, special curves. And um, this theta two of k is a concordance homomorphism and uses a concordance homomorphism um, uh, that is independent, is linearly independent uh, of the Rasmussen invariant. Yeah, so now I'm again working over characteristic uh, two here. Okay, how do we prove this? Really sketch uh, proof. Um, so there we use uh, a fourth multi curve invariant. Um, gamma, namely the one for Banat and homology, which associates with a convex tangle, uh, again, uh, a curve on the four punctured sphere. And it is very closely related to this uh, Kovanov uh, curve invariant. Okay, and this is, uh, again, due to uh, my co-authors and I. Um, and this, this, what this allows you to do is it allows you to relate the slope of this rational component to uh, the behavior of the Rasmussen invariant under satellite operations of winding number zero and uh, wrapping number two. And then using that connection, you can, you can show that it is uh, a concordance homomorphism, uh, this slope. Any questions up to this point? Say again. Yes, yeah, so, there, there's, uh, so you can set this up um, over any characteristic. Um, the, only sort of, um, the only thing that we don't know at the moment is um, whether these are also concordance homomorphisms. Um, we expect that they, they are, um, but at the moment we only get this result over characteristic two because uh, these multi-curve invariants are best understood over characteristic uh, two. Um, ah, sorry, the, sorry, I should have repeated the question. The, the question was, whether this theta invariant also works over other characteristics. No. Ah, OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, no. The Rasmussen invariant is over F mod, uh, uh, Z mod 2 coefficients in characteristic 2. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the Rasmussen invariants, you can define them over any characteristic. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, yes. So in both cases, we yeah, work over characteristic uh, 2. Yeah? No? Marco? Uh, that's an open question. We don't know that. Um, we'd like to, but we don't know whether that should be expected. Yeah? If we expect a similar result just for any tangle that has a closure, which is the optimal? Um, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I. Um, I don't know. We haven't thought about this. Yeah. So you'd be thinking about the uh, no. Uh, what would, I mean, what would be the the, the not fuller homology? What would be the k in this this case? Okay, maybe we should talk about this. So maybe I, I should wrap up. Um, so I, I want to end with uh, with three open questions. So the first question is, um, what about tangles with more endpoints? Right. So here I've only considered these tangles with um, with four endpoints. Um, which is the, the simplest non-trivial case. Okay, and I try to, to 
to make the, 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 the theory look as simple as possible. Okay. So now the question is, well, what about um, tangles with more endpoints? Can we perhaps also um, uh, prove uh, some classification results like these? Right? I mean, both settings, both Knopfler homology and Kavanaugh homology, we have algebraic invariants. Right? We have, on the Knopfler homology side, we have these uh, bordered sutured theories. We have the algebraic invariant, uh, algebraic Knopfler homology. Um, so can, can we yeah, uh, also prove uh, these similar classification results in that setting as well? And similarly, um, here on the Banatan uh, Kavanov side. Um, specifically, I'd be interested if there are, is an analog of rational uh, components for these tangles with more endpoints, because this would really have some uh, fantastic um, applications. Um, that is the first question. The second question, what about... Um, so I talked about, uh, I mentioned this Banatan invariant at the very end, um, which is the equivariant version of this Kovanov homology. Okay, so there we have both a hat flavor and a minus flavor. What about the Higa-Fleur side? Right? There we, ha we have a tangle invariant that, um, um, that works for, that recovers the hat flavor of Knopfler homology. What about a minus HFK uh, multi-curve invariant for tangles? And then the third, curve, uh, the third question, um, which is uh, the, the biggest question of, uh, yeah, uh, uh, most, most important, uh, the one that I care most about, is why, um, I'm, I'm still surprised by this picture. Um, why, why do these two invariants look so similar? So if someone has a conceptual explanation for this, um, I'd be really interested uh, to know that. Thank you. To um, pillowcase? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, uh, do I know uh, how these two multi-curve invariants are related to pillowcase homology? And um, the short answer is no. Um, there are some interesting uh, computations that um, um, uh, Paul Kirk has, has done in the pillowcase uh, um, case. And these I mean, th there are certain similarities uh, especially between the uh, sorry the pillowcase uh, curve and especially this Banatan uh, curve. So it seems that there's yeah if you I mean in, in examples you can always kind of tweak the curves and maybe resolve the crossing here and then then you get the pillowcase curve. Okay, uh, but we don't have any conceptual. I mean again you would be looking for kind of spectral sequence analog, uh, but no at the moment we don't have that. Um, Okay. But mentioning uh, Paul Kirk, um, so he, he uh, recently, uh, um, two weeks ago, was in Regensburg, and he suggested one particular family of tangles that I should compute these um, multi-curves on, namely some, some uh, yeah, torus knots uh, cut open at some point. And that, that was really, uh, really interesting because um, that gave us the first example of a multi-curve invariant that has a higher dimensional non-trivial local system on the Banatan, in the Banatan setting. So this Banatan curve can be as complicated as you, I mean, we observe all kinds of pathological behavior that you could, could imagine, uh, which is in stark contrast to these classification results um, for the other two uh, curve invariants. Yeah. yeah. This is a really silly question. <laughs> um, uh, do I get a not invariant? I, I, I have not thought about this. I haven't been bold enough to prepare. Yeah, okay. Maybe I should have been. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Jake? Yeah. Um, the, not this invariant. 
um, but the Banatan invariant. So, sorry, I should repeat the question. The question was, can I compute the S invariant of a, uh, of a cable, of a two-strand cable, um, uh, using these multi-curve invariants? And the answer is yes um, from that multi-curve invariant for, uh, for uh, Banatan, in the Banatan setting. But not for the, for the um, curve. Uh, I, maybe I should give an, give an example. So what the curve looks like for, for example, this, um, the, this tangle here. Um, the curve looks as follows. You, you, um, you have something like this, and then you, it goes off at so this, this part here has a slope um, two times uh, theta, theta of k. Um, and um, yeah, and then, then so let, let's say it, it ends up here. So let's say theta of this thing is, is equal to, I don't know, 4, I guess. Um, and then, then if you pair this with, with some other, with some pattern tangle, um, you look at, um, well, you look at compute that curve, and it also ends somewhere, yeah, it does something, something funny, and then it, it also ends at this point. Okay, and then, well, to, in the Banatan setting, you have to do rapid Lagrangian flow homology. So in that case, you, well, it comes maybe from down here, and then you have to wrap around these tangle ends, and that gives you um, an infinite series of intersection points, and that gives you the tower, the free component in Banatan homology, and the first intersection point, its quantum grading, computes the, uh, uh, the S invariant. Um, That, that curve does not fit into that classification. That's what I, so this, this curve here, um, this is the uh, Banatan curve for, for these tangles. And, and this is really, yeah, for, for this one, I don't expect to have any classification, uh, at least not as simple. I mean, as I said, this can even have non higher dimensional non-trivial local systems, which, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Think of that. Yeah. Yeah, Marco. Sorry. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Can I say anything about maps? Uh, Cobordism maps. Uh, I guess it would be easier to say things in the Kavana, or I'd we feel more comfortable saying something about this here. Um, but no, not really. Uh, not, not anything with content. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 